Today in program, buckles, bracelets, candlesticks, and other objects from brass, and how did it become part of modern Ukrainian culture? How did a few like-minded people found a company which already supplies Ukrainian soldiers? UATV tells of enthusiastic masters of brass crafts from Western Ukraine. Lviv, a city which cannot be missed if you're coming to Ukraine. Just in one year, around two million tourists visit the city from other regions of the country, as well as Europe, Poland, Germany, and Turkey. In Lviv, you can take a walk in historical parks, glance at churches from Middle Ages, and be sure to take a look at Market Square, the heart of the old town. Usually, Lviv chocolate, craft beer, and other miscellaneous items with the local symbolism are brought away as souvenirs, although the spirit of many restaurants and cafes one cannot take with himself back home. And maybe this is why the owners of one such establishment decided to start a business, which is not in any way related to restaurants, but nonetheless has a rich history in these lands. Local guides will not tell you this. Far away from historical center of Lviv sprung up a production, which took at its core both the old Hutzel traditions and the spirit of modern Ukraine. Our main products are belts with brass buckles. Generally, we are trying to create things that at least somehow are useful in everyday life. If belts can be put on pants, we also create interesting candle holders and some archaic things, such as horns for shoes. Andrei Levitsky, owner of a restaurant and the founder of the Brass Workshop, the second job he took, not because he wanted to sell his souvenirs in his cafe on Rinnick Square, Andrei doesn't even like having his buckles labeled souvenirs, but he wants for these items to become a part of the owner, not just some useless item which can be put on a distant shelf and forgotten forever. Nonetheless, Andrei came to this idea specifically because of his cafe approximately two years ago. Sometime I had to cast many things for the interior in the old Austrian style, and this is how I got to know casting. And I understand that you can create not just door handles, latches, and hooks for clothes, but instead much more interesting things. Once, even Andre himself was in need of a belt with a good brass buckle. Realizing that he did not find anything suitable in the market nor online, he decided to create the item himself. At that moment, Andre never thought how fast his interest would grow. Next in program, how 21st century technologies allowed for improvement in an ancient craft, and what is unique in these buckles. Everything began from just three buckles, which Andre made for himself and his friends. They liked it so much that it was clear, such objects may have quite the demand. But how does one redirect from restaurant business to casting business? Andre admits he would not have made it on his own. In such cases, the real Ukrainian calls Kum. I called mine and told him about my idea. Kum came two days later to me in Lviv. We thought about it, planned it out, and began to form the team. First prototypes of the buckles we decided to make in a traditional way. In these lands, it is called Musajnictvo. This is a kind of artistic metalworking known back since ancient Egypt. Different items, from elements of weaponry to jewelry, is cast from copper, brass, or bronze. On the territory of modern Ukraine, this craft is known as part of triple culture, so around 3,000 years ago. And later, it developed in Kievan Rus. In the 17th century, the Hutzel people from the Eastern Carpathians called the mosaic an alloy of non ferrous metals which included copper and tin. On Polish, this word meant exactly brass. Hutzel people made variety of things from it. Hatchets, silverware, female accessories, and even crosses. Masters either cast it all at once with complex shapes, or process the piece after casting. The first thing Andrei Levitsky wanted to embody in his buckles are the traditional Hutzel stories. In many works, we're trying to connect interesting scenarios from authentic Ukrainian motifs and ornaments. In these original belts, we have large Hutzel line of buckles. We were starting just from this. This is an interesting and an extremely deep subject. Linika, because we started from this, we were interested in this. 
But the Lviv masters soon collided with the fact that 17th century technology simply could not allow them to bring their ideas to life and create truly fine work. Primitively made buckles were looking more like souvenir replicas, but Andre wanted more, and thus he had to completely revise the production process. How it's done. Months can pass from the initial idea till the incarnation of the buckle. The work begins with creative torments and drawings. A series of Ukrainian patriotic buckles took many sleepless nights from the masters. This is a lot of work. We draw tons of sketches, and there's not a single one which makes you stop and go, oh, here it is. Everything turns out far-fetched, but from one idea come another, and complements it, and then comes a buckle. That's it. Cool. Designers perfect the sketch in a computer model, and then the file is sent to a 3D printer. First prototype of the new buckle will come to light in plastic. Modern technologies allow masters to work with really fine artistic details which cannot be worked by hand. Then, the plastic model is sent to the outskirts of Lviv and falls into the hands of caster Maxim Fredenko. He received education as a dental technician but is working with metal already for a decade. Then we remove the silicon molds from plastic models and check whether they can be worked with or not. It often happens that the designer offers an overly complex model with which you can't do much. If everything turned out fine, we pour the wax into the silicon mold and prepare it for casting, while at the same time correcting some defects. The model from the jewelry wax gives the last opportunity to radically change the design of the buckle. Lviv masters pay special attention to the back side, which is not visible when being worn. It is exactly that you can find a brand name or an unexpected continuation of the story from the front side. It is the depth of elaboration of each model that distinguishes Lviv buckles from others. How the masters use two-way stories will tell you at the end of this program. While the wax preform is joined together with others, the same is soldered to the so-called trunk. It turns out something like a tree, where instead of branches, there are wax buckles. This wax Christmas tree is filled with gypsum in a special mental container, opoka. Opoki go for a refilling for 12 hours. The wax melts and flows out, and the cast becomes stronger and can already withstand the molten metal. Then we fill in the metal. The melting point of brass is 1,150 degrees. The working temperature of the flask is 550 degrees. We insert it into a vacuum beaker, which pumps out the air, and this allows the metal to penetrate into the most delicate, laced parts of the mold. The hot embers are cooled and such brass Christmas trees are pulled out of the cast from the buckles. At this point, Maxim's work ends and the work of masters of processing begin, such as the metal artist Vladimir Nehai, to whose workshop cast blanks are delivered. The first thing you need to do after casting is to wash off the brass from the molding mass, the same mixture from which the blanks were made and later filled with metal. Then we cut the line. These are the remnants of the channels through which the brass got to the model. Next, the primary polishing begins to fully remove excess irregularities. Holes are drilled in the buckle for the belt. After that, it is placed in a special magnetic flutter where many metal needles remove the oxide coating along with the dirt. And thus, the clean buckle is covered with patina, a protective film, and polished once more.
Only then will it be considered ready. Vladimir Nehai not only mentions the final process, but also develops his own models as an artist. For example, the buckle in the form of a woman's head and at the same time a map of Ukraine is his work. All of us are working on new models together. Everyone has some ideas. We discuss them and later transfer them into sketches and bring them to life. In addition to the traditional Hutzel and Ukrainian patriotic buckles, the masters created hunting series with animals, fishing with fish, and a separate with Bartkami, the axes of Carpathian mountain riders. One of those buckles was bought from Andre online by Australians. I do not know if they understand that this is a Hutzel hatchet, but I really like that somewhere in Australia, some local John, or whatever he's called, will wear a Ukrainian bracelet on his belt. It's cool. Among Andrei's clients is the famous Ukrainian musician Oleg Skripka, as well as a poet-singer Oris Luty. But the Lvov masters value special clients the most. Several times they have been able to make buckles for fighters from various units of the armed forces who have been protecting the country for three years from invaders from the east. It's not about official military uniforms, but about accessories for civilian life. This is a buckle for the newly formed special forces. Here, Andre and his designers managed to brilliantly apply a two-sided plot. The front part is the Ugokak, the Ukrainian werewolf, and the hidden part is a Krasa character, which according to a legend, could turn into a werewolf. They both have one and the same element, the belt strap, which the Krasa has used to shape ship. This buckle depicts the duckling of the Kiev princess, dictated by the prey, against the background of the Ukrainian flag. An element of the modern small emblem of Ukraine breaks through the plumage of the left wing, and missing feathers can be found on the reverse side. One buckle metaphorically links Kiev and Rus with today's Ukraine, and such ideas Andrei Levitsky and his masters are saving for many years to come. Lviv's craftsmen are already making original candlesticks, bracelets with brass beads, temporary machines for coffee machines, but buckles remain their main passion. Before, we thought that we will stop on patriotic themes. We have enough of it. Then hop, there's such a good idea. Why not bring it to life? We take it and do it. When people write to us, we gifted your belt and there's a man who's so pleased with it. Thank you. Then I know that all our works are not in vain, and I want to create even more buckles and belts. Andre says that it is the buckles themselves that find their owners, just as Lviv attracts visitors from all over the world.